Hey ghouls and gals, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today is the start of another weekly reading vlog. Very excited to kick this vlog off because today is Tuesday and I have a snow day. Granted, the snow has not hit quite yet, but it was icy raining all last night into this morning. It's very cold outside. I believe we're starting to get more snow at around 3 p.m. So I'm fingers crossed um, that I might have a snow day tomorrow as well, no matter how old I get. I always feel the exact same about snow days and inclement weather days as I did as a kid. I'm so excited to just cozy up with my dog and my partner and I'm gonna read a lot today. We'll see if I can get anything finished before the end of the month. It is January 31st today so we'll, we'll kind of see. Um, I definitely plan on reading a lot. I am in the middle of a couple of books so I might be able to finish one today as well as I plan on starting one of my most anticipated reads of this year. So let's just go ahead and talk about those. The first book that I'm currently reading is Wizard and Glass by Stephen King. This is book four in the Dark Tower series and I'm really, really enjoying this series. So far, every single book in this series has gotten better and better. So um, I have heard that this one's a little divisive in the Dark Tower fandom. So we'll have to see on this one, but so far I am really loving it. Um, just, it's such a fascinating fantasy, western, sci-fi sort of epic story. So very much enjoying this um, and I've just been speeding through this series. I started the second book at the beginning of this month. So um, now I'm on book four. It's, they're getting chunkier as they get along the series too. So we'll, we'll see. So I don't know if I'll finish this one today, but definitely been reading and enjoying this one. Another book that I'm slowly making my way through is The Taming of the Queen by Philippa Gregory. This is like, my before bed book um, because it's just it's it's easier to go to bed to it's it's a calmer more gentle book overall historical fiction is more cozy than reading um, like hardcore horror <laughs> before bed so that's what I've been doing um, slowly making my way through this one I do plan on reading quite a few horror books in the next couple of days so I will be switching off between reading a horror book and then reading something a little more tame <laughs> like this in between those horror books to keep it fresh uh, we're finally on the last wife of Henry the eighth I hate this man I think he dies in this book fingers crossed I just I I hate him if I could go back in time and save his wives I would because oh it's 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 frustrating but I am enjoying this I just don't know how much I'm going to read throughout the day because this has just been very calming and like it's divided up in a good way where I can just read a couple pages before bed. And then this next book is the book that I'm planning on starting today. Very excited about, been waiting for this book for such a long time. That's Grady Hendrix's How to Sell a Haunted House. It's Grady Hendrix, one of my favorite horror authors. It's haunted house horror, one of my favorite horror tropes. I have very, very high hopes for this one. So we're going to start it today. Honestly, even though it is a good size, I'm, I'm hoping to finish it today because what else do I have to do than read? because it's a snow day. So those are my reading plans currently. I'm in a good mood where I'm in a good reading mood and I do have now, hopefully I'm gonna have two snow days in a row where I'm gonna have a lot of reading time to read. So we'll see how many books that I can get through this week. Looking forward to do nothing but just curling up with a good book and reading all day. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just so excited to dive into this one and I will talk to you later with another reading update.
another day another snow day very very excited i found out yesterday at around 2 p.m that um i wasn't gonna have to go into work today as well so that's super exciting it's gonna be another laid back day of doing pretty much nothing but reading and relaxing and staying indoors because it is quite chilly yesterday um you and my partner hung up some shelves did some decorating like there's things that you always put off because it is a lot of work um because we did get the shelves for Christmas and then we just finally got them put up so that was a project we really enjoyed. The other thing that I did was finish How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix and I absolutely loved this one. I will say and this is not a spoiler because it's pretty much the synopsis of the book if you have recently dealt with a death in the family especially a death of a parent I would be very hesitant going into this one because um, it does go into that a lot um, and if you've ever read Grady Hendrix's book you know that he does a really good job of balancing like true elements of terror and horror there are some horrific scary scenes in here and then also some very heartfelt ones that pull on your heartstrings so um, just to be warned I would say that's the biggest trigger for this one because we're following our main character Louise and she finds out unfortunately that both of her parents have died unexpectedly in a car crash and she has to go home and and settle the estate, figure out what to do with her parents' house and all of that. And um, her and her pretty much estranged from her brother have to kind of work together and clean up this house. Spooky things start happening and I will say her mother's main job, her passion, her hobby was creating puppets and collecting dolls. So there's a lot of that type of horror going on in here. Very poltergeisty, very chucky. Um, so yes, How to Sell a Haunted House. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than the Final Girls support group. Um, I definitely say this is probably higher up there. I haven't done a definitive ranking or anything like that, but I just loved it. And once I started it, I pretty much did not put it down. And it's like 400 pages. So I absolutely devoured this, really, really loved it. It not only had scenes where I was um, reacting in disgust out loud um, about the gross things that were happening, and then also scenes that were just so heartwarming as well. So definitely would highly recommend this. Had a lot of fun reading it. Um, and it was a great way to kick off my snow day. The next book that I ended up picking up and um, I didn't finish it, but I will finish it today because I only have five hours left of the audiobook. And that would be All the Blakes Alone with You in the Ether. This one's actually kind of a hard one to describe. Again, I picked it up because I knew it was more of a contemporary, I don't want to say romance, um, because there is like a romance in it. Um, but I feel like also from what I've heard of the author say, it's also just about like finding yourself. Um, so I'm reading it. I'm enjoying it. It's definitely very interesting because I'm listening to the audiobook, um, the way that it's formatted in there will be like narrators and it's almost set up as like a stage play. So that's very interesting. So yeah, I've got about five hours left of it. I don't have much to say on it just yet. It's just our two main characters. We're getting to know them. It's going to be very character driven. Um, I feel that about all of Olive E. Blake's books. Honestly, if you're not a character driven reader, if you don't like very slow and character heavy books um, as opposed to plot heavy books you're probably not gonna vibe with the writing style because this is just um, a bunch of conversations between two people so far um, and it's very interesting and they're very interesting people but that's really been it there's not a lot of action it's just discovering these two people discovering each other so once I finish that which again I feel like I am gonna finish it pretty quickly today um, I think I'm gonna move on to another horror book because I really enjoyed How to Sell a Haunted house um and then after that we'll see but that is my update feeling very lucky to have another snow day um and luckily have like a fully stocked pantry and everything so we're set um we'll see what the situation's looking like tomorrow because i think today we're supposed to get some more snow um and tomorrow it's supposed to like have freezing rain so maybe i'm not holding my breath or anything to see if we get a snow day but i wouldn't be surprised also if we get another snow day just based 
based on I think the weather is actually going to be worse than it was yesterday which we had a calamity day for so yes I'm gonna go get to reading get to enjoying my peaceful Wednesday morning and I will talk to you all later vlog happy Friday um, I did end up having to go into work on Thursday so two snow days this week still can't complain we did have like a delayed opening on Thursday but still it was rough um, I definitely enjoyed probably my snow days more than I should have just in terms of staying up late sleeping in late so it was very hard to get back into the swing of things on Thursday so I did an update then it is now Friday I'm done with work going back to work in the evening to help host a program um, but I do have some reading updates so I did finish two books in the time since I've last spoke the first one um, I did already return it to the library but it was The Taming of the Queen by Philippa Gregory thank god Henry VIII is dead moving on with this series I think there's only like four books left in the Tudor and Plantagenet series so um he's gone he is just like such a hateful character. I know a lot of that is characterization and like novelization but um I feel like it's something that for whatever reason like we learn really young um about like monarchy sort of history like even in the U.S. um and learning about the rhyme and all of that and Henry and all of his wives um that was interesting to learn about when I was a kid. It's so much sadder now like I can't there, there have been a number of experiences like this where I knew they were sad, I knew they were tragic as a kid, but fully like understanding like the rate at which he went through wives and like the zero agency that they all had. I mean, his youngest wife, Kitty Howard, um, was a teenager and it's just heartbreaking on a whole different level um, as an adult. So I did really enjoy that one. Moving on to the next one, I think is The Queen's Fool. I think it follows Queen Elizabeth's, um, like one of her servants, which I have noticed a lot of my favorites in this long series have been people who are like royal adjacent and not necessarily the royals themselves. Um, I'm thinking uh, Margaret Poole and then Jaquetta. Those were like very interesting protagonists to me. I feel like the same for this one. And then the second Second book that I finished was Alone with You in the Ether by Olive Blake. Definitely my least favorite Olive Blake. Um, I still write hard for her. She's one of my favorite authors, but this is like a literary romance. Um, and I'm not into those genres. I wouldn't have picked it up had it not been from that author. So definitely keeping that in mind. There were a number of passages that I thought were very beautiful and really enjoyed, but just the story is not my kind of story. Didn't really keep my interest as much as her speculative fiction does. So I did enjoy it. Um, I think if you're not a fantasy person and want to kind of sample Albie Blake's writing, I think this would be a good one if you like. Um, I hesitate to call it a romance because I know romance as a genre has a lot of stipulations on what it has to have to be considered a true romance book, but I would say like a literary romantic story. Um, but I did enjoy it still, just wasn't um, my cup of tea. Moving on to, I guess, weekend reading plans. The book that I plan to pick up um, other than Wizarded Glass by Stephen King. That one I'm still making my way through. Um, but I am going to pick up The Nightmare Man by J.H. Markert. And um, this came out in January 
and I don't know much about it except it says T. Kingfisher meets Cassandra Call in a chilling horror novel that illustrates the fine line between humanity and monstrosity um, and I think it's about a writer who's writing a horror novel and the horror novel may or may not be bleeding into his real life so yeah a premise that I love in movies love in books um well I don't I can't actually think of any off the top of my head um but movies like I love sinister this gives me the plot he gives me sinister vibes but I haven't started it yet so I'm definitely going to do that I do have a couple of hours before I have to go back to work so I'm probably going to hop on the treadmill walk a little bit read a little bit of this maybe wizard and glass I haven't decided which one and then I just have like that three hours of the program and then it'll be the weekend so those are my reading plans I'm gonna go get to reading and I will talk to y'all later Hey vlog, happy Sunday. This is gonna be like the second to last update. In this vlog, I'm gonna see how much I can read today and then update at the end of the day. But I did manage to finish a book. Um, I started this yesterday, finished it yesterday, and rather unfortunately, I do not recommend. Um, so this is The Nightmare Man by J.H. Markert and um, the plot was very interesting to me. It seemed like a lot of movies I really enjoy. Um, just a premise that I find is really fascinating. So we're following two main points of view. One of them is a writer and he's writing these horror novels and his latest one gets published and murders start happening in his small town that mirror the murders in his book. And then we're also following a police detective as he's trying to figure out what's going on. Is this author involved? Is it something more supernatural or is it just um, a horrible person doing these things? Um, so interesting premise. The writing style for me is not one that I enjoy and um, I think a lot of issues that I had with it. I saw that this author, I don't know if this is a pen name for the person or not, but the person who wrote this um, actually writes, I believe, screenplays, a producer and a screenwriter. So um, a lot of the issues that I took fault with, I could see how that would be very important a screenplay I think overall this would be really good as a movie just because some of the things were very much told to you and not shown um, there were a couple of things where there are very obvious foreshadowings and it felt strange in here to read a detail that didn't seem important and then since it's so out of place you kind of go well that's gonna turn up later um, whereas if you're writing it down um, in terms of a movie if you note that you want to have like a camera pan to that specific feature or specific detail it doesn't feel as out of place so just the writing not not my favorite um, also um, this is very strange I don't really know how to articulate this but all of the characters there was a ton of alliteration in here um, almost all of the characters have first and last names that go together that are the same letter one of our main characters the author characters named Ben Bookman um, there's also a Jessica something her last name starts with J like there's a lot of that so to where I almost feel like this author could write like a cozy horror series um or like a J horror series like a lot of that felt weirdly hokey um and really took me out of the story when every single character just had like these weirdly alliterative and like juvenile names um so that was like very strange and a couple other things like that made me feel um just like the writing style was not a great fit for me um i did notice this has like a very high rating for a horror book um i'm not quite sure why that is but at the same time i think if it's your first um foray into horror maybe if you don't read a lot of horror um that you might like this um i feel bad saying that i feel like i'm being very harsh on this book i don't get it um 
there's some multiple blurbs on here saying that this is like the clear heir to Stephen King, that it's a character-driven novel. I definitely say this is a plot-based novel. Um, and just a lot of it, just I almost felt like it could be like a cozy horror series, especially with what happens at the end and like the world building that this is a pretty short book, could have been fleshed out more. Um, if this had been like, not even a cozy mystery, like try and make like a cozy horror series or even like a J-horror series, I think it would have done so much better. Um, so the concept was interesting, just the execution just was not to my liking. So um, I do think it's worth pointing out though that I did finish it. So it is very readable um, and I definitely think it's a book that you can easily fly through. It just was not my favorite reading experience of the week. Now I was still in a horror mood when I finished that. It didn't necessarily scratch that horror itch that I wanted. So I did pick up It Came From The Closet, Queer Reflections on Horror and this is a collection of essays. It's edited by Joe Valese and this is 25 contemporary queer and trans writers reflect on the horror films that shaped them and shook them from Hitchcock to Halloween to Hereditary. Um, and I'm really loving this. I'm really, really loving this. Pretty much that description um, is very apt. I feel like I can't give a better one than that. It's just every single one of these essays is kind of about the author's complex sometimes or just very interesting. Like I feel like a ton of queer people, at least that I know, or it's like very common to love horror. Like it's definitely a very interesting relationship. Um, let's see, my favorites so far, my favorite essays so far have been Both Ways by Carmen Maria Machado. That was on Jennifer's Body. I also really enjoyed, I also really enjoyed The Wolf in the Room by Prince Shakur. I also really enjoyed A Demon Girl's Guide to Life by S. Trimble and that was on The Exorcist. So I'm, I'm really, really enjoying this collection of stories. So if you like horror fiction, if you're also queer, I check this out. It's very fascinating. It's very enlightening. If you love horror fiction, horror movies, um, pretty much though, do be aware. Um, the essays, if it mentions a specific movie in the essay, it's going to be spoiled pretty much for you. So um, know that going into there. You might have to skip some of these essays if they spoil movies that you still want to see, but I'm really, really enjoying this. I don't think I'll finish it anytime soon. Um, maybe it's very readable, but it is a collection of stories. So you can read one, get back to it later. But I'm about halfway through, I'm really enjoying this. And then last but not least, I'm also, I think pretty much exactly halfway through Wizard and Glass. I'm really loving this. I will say a large part of this is a flashback, which I think is what people don't tend to like about this one. Um, I'm not hating it so far. I am nervous it's going to be most of this book is going to be this flashback story that Roland is telling, which in that case, it probably won't be my favorite of the series, but so far it is interesting. I'm really enjoying it. I'm going back and forth between the audiobook and reading it physically and just having a good old time with it. I haven't really decided what the rest of my reading plans are going to be for today. I am I'm still in like a big horror mood so I might pick up um, even though I'm really enjoying it came from the closet I want something fictional because that is nonfiction so I might pick up another book or focus on finishing the book that I'm already halfway through so who knows I'm gonna go get to reading and I will check back in and wrap up the vlog a little bit later So it is late, it is time to wrap up the vlog, but I did actually start and finish another book, which is kind of an indicator of how much I enjoyed it. I did start and finish this in pretty much one sitting. I started it when I was walking on the treadmill and just kept going because I really enjoyed it. Now this is not 300 pages, 
Um, it's 260 pages. It is a little bit smaller than a traditional hardback. It was one, at least for me, that was just so entertaining, intriguing, and then also just short enough where I just wanted to read it all in one go. So that would be Decent People by Deshaun Charles Winslow. And this is a mystery. It is historical fiction. It takes place in the 1970s and it's about the death of three prominent black figures in this segregated town. The town's first black doctor and her two siblings are shot to death in their home and no one knows who has done it. Um, the police, the mostly white police force, really want to brush it under the rug, say that it was drug related um, for not a lot of reason. They also have as one of their main suspects, their half-brother, who is actually engaged to one of our main characters. So our main character, Josephine Wright, she lived in this small town of West Mills her whole entire life, almost as a child. Her family moved to New York, she lived there. Now reaching retirement, she's moving back, ready to start this peaceful life with her fiance and just settle into retirement when these murders occur, pretty much when she moves back to the town. She's furious at the way the police are brushing it under the rug and also the way her community is starting to ostracize her fiance because they think that he did it. So she sets out to try and dispel these rumors, figure out who actually killed these people. So this was very, very interesting because we follow Jo and she's our main character, but we also do get point of views from three other suspects and they all have very compelling reasons why they could have committed these murders um and i think it's so fascinating this is so short but it's such an interesting character study because um you don't like any of the characters until you see inside their heads and see where they're coming from um for the most part there are some horrible people in this but for the most part all of the characters that we get a point of view from are deeply flawed deeply complex and have motivations that at first glance you might not understand and then you read their point of view um, and you really understand it. I will say I did figure out who done it but I think it's one of those where it's crafted so beautifully um, that it's not like a shocking twist for a shocking twist's sake. It makes sense. It tells a beautiful story. So it says also that um, Decent People is a brilliant novel about shame, race, money, homophobia, and the reckoning required to heal a fractured community. So I absolutely flew through this one and I really enjoyed it. I haven't read a true mystery in a while. I've read a lot of horror mysteries. I've read a lot of thrillers um, but I really did enjoy reading this one and I love that I get to end off this vlog with a positive book recommendation. I really enjoyed it. I sped through it. I really wanted to know all about these flawed characters and then solve the mystery as well. So that's going to be it for this vlog. If you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more content from me. Stay safe, stay spooky, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!